hello again and uh, happy new year to everybody. Um, I thought I'd just do a uh, finally get onto the video about Aragorn's coronation crown. Uh, so welcome to my workshop. Um, we'll get into it. Um, I've got some footage here that uh, I'll do a bit of voiceover on and um, we'll see if we can uh, talk our way through some of the techniques that I used um, to uh, to make this iconic movie piece. All right, so here we go. The first thing I want to talk about is the overall manufacture of the crown. Um, first of all, it was made out of copper uh, back on the Lord of the Rings, uh, the first trilogy. Uh, we were trying to do things um, not so much on a budget, but um, just ease of use really. Um, so, the whole, so the whole thing was made of, uh, of copper and uh, silver plated, um, which I gave an antique finish. Uh, two after it came back from the silver plater. Uh, copper is wonderful material. It uh, it works very much like um, like silver, and there really wasn't any need to uh, to make it out of uh, real silver. Um, we changed that when we came to the Hobbit, of course, uh, for Galadriel's crowns. But that's another story. Uh, we'll get on to another day. Um, but yeah, iconic movie piece. Um, First thing I need to say is I didn't design it. Um, most of the stuff, um, well, like most of the stuff that are that uh, that is made in the costume and uh, and props department, um, comes from the designers. There's a reasonable amount of my interpretation uh, uh, gone into the manufacture of the crown. We get the drawings from the design department, and uh, it's our job to um, to turn those into a into reality, uh, into a into a real object. Um, so there's always going to be some artistic interpretation. What have we got? Let's start with um, the main part of the crown. Um, so all the um, um, the body of the crown basically uh, was patterned um, in in heavy paper, laid out flat, cut from copper, uh, bent round to uh, what we were uh, told at the time was the correct size. Um, that's a whole other story, uh, but. Uh, once that was joined, uh, it was a matter of putting on all the details. So first things, I guess, um, mainly the uh, the winged crown, the, the feathered part of the crowns. This was all done out of sheet. Each of these was a separate part. That was cut from flat, um, and we'll, um, we'll insert the video of that shortly. Um, but it was just patterned, uh, basically, and then... Um, the uh, each and each individual flight was cut and then beaten out from the back as you can see quite um, quite readily from this uh, one of the one of the uh, best shots of, in, in the whole film of the of the crown itself as far as detail goes um, because you can see pretty much every element of it but uh, as i say beaten out from the back uh, that was laid in a bowl of pitch um, and uh, and beaten out from the back now this is where one of the amusing stories comes in um, from the week that I spent manufacturing this crown was that every surface on it, um, there, there's really nothing on there that doesn't have a beaten texture. Um, now, in the costume department on uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, where uh, I was working as an Aragorn cast double, uh, but because I'm a jeweler by trade, um, they asked me to, um, quite a privilege really, to uh, to to will this. Um, crown design into into uh, solid reality every everything on there has a beaten beaten texture so um, with my little workshop set up um, uh, down in one corner of the costume department um, tapping away uh, I got through about half a day's worth of tapping and I was driving everybody nuts um, so I was banished from the costume department uh, probably for the rest of the week so the beaten texture Basically, uh, as you'll see in this short video clip coming up, um, is tap, 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 tap um, on pretty much every surface. The back, the background in here, the main body of the crown on the outside of it uh, is, is beaten texture. These are the sorts of details that are really hard to pick up um, on film because, you know, they're not focused on the crown itself, um, which is why this is one of the better shots. But the yeah the flat exterior rather than just being a plain plain flat, uh, flat piece of silver um, has has a beaten texture 
and then details are added and laid over top of those. Each of the details laid over top, um, this is all pierced out of um, well, what was copper at the time. And once again, a, pe a peened texture, so a beating texture, just to give it some life, basically, um, give it some um, some dimension, um, and then um, and then solder it on. Uh, when it comes to the uh, the wire, um, we've got twisted wire here. I've got a, a a larger gauge twisted wire for the main part of it, um, but which is often missed is that there's a finer gauge twisted wire um, wound round um, in between uh, the larger gauge wire that's twisted there. Once again, that just gives some extra detail and, um, and uh, we'll pop a, um, a short excerpt of, um, of how that was done uh, as well. This twisted wire um, is a medium gauge. The details were, were pierced out and soldered on. Everything's, there's, there's very little in there that's flat. The main body of the crown is, is flat, but everything um, laid on it is either domed or textured or both um, in a lot of cases. So there's quite a bit more detail going on there than, uh, you know, might first appear um, to the eye. As with many props and, and, uh, and, and indeed costumes in, the, uh, in those films in the trilogy, um, there's a lot more detail goes into them than um, than people realise, and that that itself adds interest and uh, realism and believability to the to the costumes and the props, and a, and a real depth um, depth of design um, depth of um, of uh, believability that this is an ancient crown. Um, once it came back, of course, this is um, this is then all finished uh, in copper. Sent to the um, sent to the platers, hard plated in silver, um, sterling silver or fine silver actually, um, and when it came back, of course, brand new, shiny looking, um, which um, is something else that I'll touch on in the um, in the video when I come to do the breakdown video. Uh, but basically, we had to to antique it, um, and that was a process of um, uh, immersing it in a, um, a solution um, containing, amongst other things. Um, some uh, sulfur, uh, which was very quickly blackened silver, and then buffed up the highlights. Um, that in itself um, was almost an entire day's work, um, just getting it to the to the right um, the right grade or the right tone um, for what we needed. This is the fabulous work of Jasmine Motson um, with um, with Arwen's crown. Beautiful, beautiful piece of um, of Art Nouveau. Um, jewelry design and um, um, and execution as well on that. Um, when it came to Aragorn's crown, she would likely have done it, uh, but the costume designer made the decision that um, for his crown, obviously they wanted a slightly heavier touch, you know, a, 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 um, a more um, brutal approach um, than obviously um, Jasmine's fine work here which is why that job landed in my lap, uh, very fortunately. Wonderful, wonderful piece. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll get on to um, showing you some of those um, videos of the actual um, techniques. The materials that I'm using are um, not necessarily exactly the same dimensions as, uh, as these, but uh, you'll, you'll get the idea as we go along. All right, cool, let's get into it. Uh, the main texture of the crown itself um, being the um, the uh, tap 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 that I was uh, mentioning, um, I've got a piece of silver here, sterling silver, um, basically flat bar, and uh, with a polished panning hammer, um, we're just applying a texture to it. And you can imagine that uh, that tap 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 had to be on every single flat surface of the crown, and. Um, as I say, a week of that was going to drive everybody crazy. Um, so after the first morning of it, uh, I was banished uh, to the downstairs department. Uh, I think I was actually down with the potters and the, and the boot makers, to be honest. So, um, but yeah, even with the uh, the fact that the the tapping wasn't that loud, um, it's just the repetitiveness of it uh, actually started to get to me after a few days as well. 
uh, but we give that a bit of a, a quick rub with some um, some polishing um, sheet and uh, we'll give you a bit of a close-up on the uh, on the texture of that but it gives a bit, bit of extra kick a bit of extra life um, to the surface which reads really well on screen so here's a bit of a close-up of that um, and you can see that peened texture um, once polished up and, um, and aged um, just gives a really nice um, gives a really nice sheen all right so now we come to selecting a piece of um, piece of material for the filigree work uh, on the background I've got a selection of different silver pieces here um, I'll demonstrate the technique on um, this uh, piece of embossed silver that I've got it's a fairly thin sheet compared to the one that uh, that I would have used uh, on the on the crown So once the piercing is done um, and uh, the, the various uh, shapes are, uh, are cut out of the material um, then we can go along with a file and uh, just tidy up those negative spaces. It's a little bit easier with a, a thicker material um, but uh, the effect's much the same. Because I used thicker material on Aragorn's crown that was all um, uh, all peened as well so it had that uh, even the filigree detail had that peened texture on it all right so here we go um, basic pattern making for the um, for the uh, the winged parts the feathers Once the pattern's out, uh, would have been laid on the copper sheet and um, and pierced out. It's easy to get it symmetrical, of course, by just folding the sheet in half. Um, there would have been uh, the design enlarged to scale, probably on a photocopier when I did it. Um, this is just a quick example. And um, this would have all been done with a with a fret saw uh, when we came to do the copper, um, cutting down the uh, the side of each flute or each flight uh, prior to being set in the pitch bowl, um, and then beaten out from the back um, with the back of a. Uh, it would have been a doming punch. I think it's uh, probably a little bit small for a um, for a pinion hammer, uh, but uh, definitely a bit of work in that as well. And once again, the, the tap 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 that was driving everybody crazy. So once we open that out, uh, you can uh, get a good idea of the uh, the actual shape. So there would have been one of those laid on top of the other, um, and. Uh, everything given just a, a slight twist or a slight tweak just to set it apart from the other from the other elements uh, but peening out from the back um, or, or doming slightly from the back gives the um, once it's in copper or, or silver uh, gives it three-dimensionality and um, so you've got the texture and the and the three-dimensionality working for you as well so that's basic, basically it. Uh, front and back, a um, couple of these in two different sizes um, and uh, just laid on top of each other. I think the cuts probably went a bit deeper when I did it in copper, um, almost uh, almost through to the spine. Uh, so here's a quick um, quick demonstration of the, um, the twisted wire edging uh, that went round the top and bottom um, and various other places on the crown. Uh, this is silver wire I've got here. Um, it's not quite as thick as the uh, as the the wire around the edging on the crown itself, but uh, the technique's the same. Basically, um, just taking as long a piece as I need, fold it in half, and um, give it a twist. There was a fair amount to do on the crown, of course, so um, more than likely, uh, I think I would have put it in a power drill, one end of a power drill, one end in a, in a, end in a vice, and. Um, and uh, twisted it that way. The effect's much the same. The, the main thing is just to, to get the twist even. Um, and it's, uh, it's trial and error really. 
but uh, once the larger gauge wire was done um, we do the same with a much finer gauge wire and then the finer gauge wire is uh, wound around the the, uh, the heavy gauge wire and it gives you that uh, that dual twist effect I've got some finer gauge wire that's been uh, pre-twisted here so we'll just wrap that around not quite the same ratio um, looks better if you can get a um, a, um, a good heavy gauge wire with a really light um, wire basically filling in the gaps and of course because of the nature of the twist um, as you go down um, it's only going to get every second or third one um, so if you wanted to fill them all in you'd, you'd actually need the three strands of, of the finer wire um, and you can see from the close-up on the crown um, I actually only used the one 